Good. Good morning. Let's get started. So we have lecture number four. Uh, for this, I want to highlight several things. First topic is Java generics. Second topic is Java collection framework. And then to see if we have time, uh, how we encounter different samples. Regarding Java generics, I'm not going to read from the PowerPoint slides. It makes no sense. Um, and if you encounter any issue, including technical one, that you are not seeing the font and so on and so forth, please do not hesitate to uh, raise your hand or uh, contact me or say something in the meeting. Now let's move forward with Java generics. What means Java generics? And for this, I'm going to start this uh, mach uh, virtual machine with Linux Ubuntu 16, long-term support. And in here, in lecture number four, with two samples, I'm going to cover uh, this. First of all, as analogy, in C++, you have a template class programming, and you have used them in standard <coughs> library. Bless you. So you have started in uh, standard template library in C++. <laughs> For instance, you had from uh, STD, from standard, you had a vector class, you have the Q class as containers, and so on and so forth. And uh, the main idea for this is because the here is password stood. Uh, you want to have a meta language. I mean, the designers want to have a meta language. And uh, you design a class vector of T, whatever T uh, class means, type means. And you may have a class vector of T type, for instance, void star pointer to void, then int, then double, then student star, and then monkey star, satellite, and so on and so forth. And for this, meaning that in C++, for each instantiation of the vector class, another text class is created, then is compiled, and then linked edit, and then you have the exit. In Java and in C Sharp, the things are a little bit different. And for this, I'm going to highlight the following. So I'm going into Java AC. And here in lectures, actually, you have access to this, uh, as you know very well, from this website, acs.asa.ro slash Java. You have the lectures. These are the first column, the PDF files. Then in lecture number four, if you are clicking on this download icon, then you are redirected to GitHub. And in GitHub in here, we have the sources and the command line of compilation for lecture number four, the one that I'm going to show to you right now. So each lecture is having this cmdcompile.txt. You can replicate this in this virtual machine on Linux, but on Windows as well with minor modifications. Minor modifications meaning uh, that uh, you want to uh, have something like uh, running this, but on Windows, of course, you are going to have instead the forward slash like this, you will have backward slash like this. But otherwise, everything is uh, applying as it is. And instead of export, you may have set, and instead of two points, semicolon. That's it. These are only two, three or four differences between batch in Windows and shell script, what we have right now in Linux. So I'm going to export this path, Java underscore home. Here I have installed Java 8. Then update the path environment variable being like bin folder from the Java underscore home previously declared. And in addition, in concatenation, I have from folder user, USR, uh, local as bin, local bin and so on. Then I have the class path, and here is where we have the lectures, and I'm going in lecture number four in the source folder. So copy, and I'm going to start the terminal. And in the terminal, I think the font right now should be good enough for everybody, Power Working Directory. is. I'm going to put the question very carefully. Is anybody who did or who cannot see this font size? Cannot? Otherwise, I assume everybody can see it. Okay, therefore, I'm going to check chat right now. I see no input in the chat. 
good. So I'm going to paste. And what I have in here, export, 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 and then change directory. Therefore, if I'm typing power working directory command, Linux command, PWD, then I'm in here. Actually, I'm going to replicate for the Windows Explorer equivalent, Nautilus in Linux, Ubuntu. So in this program, Nautilus, I, I should see where I am right now, besides the uh, compilation file and so on that we have already discussed. So as you can see here with uh, key combination control L, I see the entire path, which is correct, slash home, slash stud, slash Java AC, from Java standard edition, slash lecture, slash uh, C04. And in here we have sources. And in sources, we have two packages, EU.ASA, and finally, first let's discuss about generics and then Java collection framework. Generics. In generics, we have two samples, generics one and generics four. Usually the suffix of the source code is stating for us the order of understanding the samples. And as you can see here in generics one, I have a class box. This class box is able to uh, store, to contain one object, whatever object we have. As you may know, uh, I have discussed already, object class is the parent of all classes and doesn't matter I'm including or not, I'm going to type in here. By default, I have something like import java.lang.object. The same is in C-sharp, but object class is in system and is with small o instead of capital O. Now, in this class box, I'm planning to store an object, doesn't matter this object in um, real type, not declarative type. Could be a, an object from class satellite, could be an object from class uh, ray list, uh, from package Java util, uh, from doesn't matter what kind of object, I can store this one by calling non-static method add, and I'm typing here this dot object equals object that I'm receiving on the stack. So this object from the stack of the method add is actually this one, and this dot object is relating to, is referring to uh, to uh, this object from here from the field of the class, and this is for the add method. Then for get method, of course, I'm going to expose outside of the class this kind of object. It's a little bit awkward because I can have boxes can store only one object like this one, but I can have boxes that can store two or three objects or many objects like a, an array list. But doesn't matter, I'm storing objects in here. <laughs> now, I have a box demo one, which as you can see is having the entry point public static void main. And into it, I have what? An integer box. And in this integer box, I'm going to add an object from class integer. This one doesn't matter I'm typing or not, by default is like I'm typing here, import java.lang package dot integer. Good. This being said, I'm adding an integer and then after a few lines of code, actually immediately in line 29, I'm getting an um, object, an integer from here and I'm printing. Therefore, this class is correct, is going to compile and is going to run. Now, finally, I have box demo two class. And as you can see here, I have the same integer box. I'm adding, but when I'm adding in here, please note, this is a string object, right? Because it's between codes and this is from Java lang string. And the same, even I'm typing or not, is actually import automatically for Java lang package. All the classes from Java lang are imported automatic, automatically. I'm typing in line number five right now. java.lang.string. And as you can see in here, after I did this import, doesn't matter I'm typing or not, anyway, by default it is, I'm highlighting the fact that in my integer box, in this second sample, I'm adding 10 as a string object. And then I'm getting out from the box with get method and I'm putting on the screen. The problem in here, as you may remember, the problem is the class cast exception. Why? Because I, I have gone from string object into object object, right, from object class. And then instead of returning with get back in string, I gone in integer. So both of the classic classes, integer and string, are inheriting object. 
but they are different, of course. And then I'm creating like a triangle. And in this triangle is not correct. It's the sample that we did in the previous lecture. And I'm going to pinpoint this. Let me show you lecture number three. And you have it um, already published in the GitHub. And, they, and as you can see in here, in lecture number three, we have discussed about this cat and uh, feline from class feline and tiger. And we said, yes, we have class feline. From this, we are inheriting in cat class and in tiger class. And what we did is a sample in the lab. We did with the car and plane, both of them inheriting vehicle class. And was the same discussion regarding class class exception. A cat can believe is a tiger, but actually is not. And therefore, this is always a class cast exception. Cat going through feline, cast to tiger. Of course, I can do it in terms of source code, but in terms of compilation, and then in run, I have class cast exception, and I have shown seven days ago, including in C++, how is this done? Uh, and how can I avoid in C++? In Java, of course, with try-catch mechanism, I can avoid also this tiger going in cat and vice versa. So this is famous class cast exception and therefore is what I highlighted in this sample as well. So I'm going into uh, adding a string and then getting out with an integer, which is false, of course. Let's see how is uh, the behavior. Please note that I have a single text file, generics.1.java, the generics1.java. And as you can see in here, if I would have a one public class, I can have only one in terms of case sensitive text with generics1 public class, public class generics1. But instead of this, I have three classes which they are not private nor public, they are package level by default. And then I have class box, box demo one and box demo two, meaning from the same source code Java, uh, generics onejava text file, I'm going to obtain from this one, three bytecodes file, three dot class files, actually each one for having box, box demo one, one and box demo two. Let's see this. So right now I have only source, as you can see in here. And let me, <clears throat> compile this and I'm going to compile generics one go in terminal clear a little bit please if you have questions just do not be afraid uh, just put them so I'm going to compile and after compilation phase, I'm going to obtain the class file. As you can see, ls minus litr. And here from EU ASA generics, this is on the command line. I have these classes that I have obtained today on 13 March at 7.54 local hour. Box class, box demo one class, box demo two dot class. And in Nautilus as well, as you can see, I have obtained these classes, box class, box demo one class, box demo two class. Okay, now let's run after this uh, short compile. So I'm going to run and in order to run, I'm going to say something like in order to be generic for all the platforms in running, I can use dot instead of forward slash like in Linux so backward slash like in Windows. So I'm using dot in running. And in the first example, if you remember, I have no issue, right? So in the first example, I have to simply put an integer object into box and then get it out an integer and display it on the screen. So I'm going to do this. Fine. Good. So let me type it and I have it. Good. Right is the famous number 10 that I had in here. I simply displayed on the screen and everybody is happy. Now in here, because of class cast exception, the string goes into object according to the add method is the automatically upcast. And then when I'm going with downcast, instead of going into string in here, I'm going into integer, boom, class cast exception. Besides this, I do not have try catch mechanism. And as you may observe right now, I'm going to run. And now is a tricky part is going to crash the program. And my issue in here, my challenge, is instead of crashing the program into the compile phase, 
is crashing into run phase, which is awkward and this is not desirable for any kind of product that you have in the market. So it's very strange to provide the program to, to the market and to the consumer to uh, end the contract. And then after running in some certain combination of conditions, then the program is going to crash. And therefore, for this, I have generics programming and gen for about generics programming. So let me delete right now the class files. You got an idea what is the challenge problem. And you may wonder why we are discussing about generics because the entire framework of Java collection, so the JCF, Java collection framework, is using two topics, two main topics. One is interfaces type. The second one is generics programming. And you are going to understand in a bit. So I'm going to move to trash this and let's focus about the discussion in generics 4. So in terms of syntax in generics 4, it looks a little bit like programming standard with standard template library or with template, template classes, right? So I have box of T, whatever T. My object that I'm storing in here could be, again, an object, could be an integer, could be a double, could be a whatever, an object from class satellite or tiger. And therefore, my entire syntax is modifying. And then I have whatever T I have. Therefore, I have add an object from T class and then extract the object from my box, of course, from the T class. And as you can see in here, I'm doing what? I'm doing an integer box of box of T whatever T is replaced right now by a certain class, which is from package Java lang integer. And here I'm adding a new anonymous object, integer 10. And then I'm getting out this integer. Till now, so far so good. It's going to work for sure and we are going to see. Again, I do not have a class, um, public class. And in the same text file, I have two package level classes, box of t, whatever t, I'm going to obtain a box.class and box demo for, which is going to obtain box demo for dot class. And after 200 line of codes, eventually another programming via GitHub or SVN or whatever repo is doing what? Is adding an integer, uh, a string to my integer box. As you can see, this 100 between codes is a Java lang string object. And then is expecting to uh, print this sum integer because it's adding in line 26 and the, uh, on purpose is a little bit uh, indented in here. So is adding in this line number 26, a Java lang string. This string is replacing T whatever T, but I flag it in before running in the compilation phase. I'm flagging that my box is going to store Java lang integer objects from, so objects from Java lang package class integer. And therefore, what is going to happen right now? Let me show you. When I'm compiling this generics for .java, when I'm compiling this, as you can see, I'm not going to obtain the class files. So the only class files I'm going to obtain, you see I have error on line 26 here in generics 4.java, two points, line 26, incompatible types. String cannot be converted to integer, of course, because I have class cast exception, the tiger, the cat, the vehicle, car against the plane. And we have discussed already this, but what is very important is the fact that this class cast exception did not happen at runtime, happened at compile time. So the generics programming helps me as a software developer to move the error from the runtime phase into compilation phase, which is great because I cannot deliver my deliverables, my bundles, my packages, uh, my software uh, programs, I cannot deliver to the clients. And therefore I have to handle my own first these bugs and then to deliver a proper good software. As you can see, I have obtained only box of T whatever T class, right here. But this class, the one in generics for, I was not able, so I only obtained actually this box uh, of T whatever T class. But this class with public static void main, I cannot obtain because of line 26. Here I had the class cast exception. Are any questions till now? Good. Based on this, 
you have the slides starting with Java 6 is this, even 5, this generic um, programming. And of course, if I want to use instead of box T, I can use, for instance, in here, T, Y, whatever, right? So I can use whatever type I want, but I have to be consistent. I can use a word polenta, doesn't matter. As long as I am consistent, I can use whatever word I want. I want. And uh, for instance, if I'm going to compile again, so clear, right? So again, I have the same error, nothing else, nothing more. But is a best practice in here. Exactly like a class should start with capital letter, an interface as well. And uh, the get and set method should have uh, get and set with small letters and then whatever it makes sense with capital letter. As you can see in here, I have a best practice um, approach. And then I use T because I want to flag, I want to highlight that I'm going to have a type in there, like integer, like string, like satellite, like monkey, and so on and so forth. Key is for the key, K, then V for the value, and for the number, and finally E for the element. This being said, moving forward, Let's move forward and let's discuss about Java Collection Framework. So first of all, what is Java Collection Framework? So it's a set a hierarchy of classes, abstract classes and interfaces for the containers. So I have containers, mainly what kind of containers? The main containers I can have linear one, tree one, like a binary search tree one or not, the tree one, and then a hash table one. And these are the containers like in STL, standard template library in C++. And besides the containers, I have what? Algorithms, right? Algorithms for sorting, algorithms for map and reduce, and so on and so forth. So this is Java Collection Framework, and all these hierarchies and classes are implemented into, uh, as you uh, may understand, into java.util class. Now, let's move forward. And uh, then I'm going to start a Kahoot for you for lecture number four. Um, not only for the presence. Again, the presence is mandatory both in lecture and in um, labs, in seminar, because we have to work remote. And this is our proof that we are doing our job. Me as a teacher, you as a student. And right now, after these two or five minutes, after explaining something, then I'm going to start on Kahoot and therefore I'm going to have your presence as well. You may say, okay, look, you have 51% participants. You can print screen with the name that they are in there. Yes, this is an approach, but I would like to discuss over Kahoot just for the sake of fun for two or three minutes. But before going there, let's focus a little bit more and let's discuss. So I'm going to do a ninja intro of two or five minutes about data structure. Of course, I'm not going to replace the data structures lecture and labs that you have this semester. And I strongly recommend to you to follow and to attend those meetings and to work on those meetings of data structures because they are done in C and you are understanding it better. But in here, I want to highlight three types of data structures and how you are going to work with them. Right. So these three types, I'm going to highlight them. First is the linear one. Of course, imagine you have an array with numbers because it's very fast to explain with numbers. 10, 7, the next one is 7, then 14, then 20, then 1, then 5, then 8. So you have this array. Of course, this, uh, this is a linear data structure with the pen on the paper. But I can imagine in programming what kind of linear, whatever kind of linear structure, like a vector, like an array like a linked list, simple linked list, like a double linked list, which is the actually from Java util linked list class in Java, and in C++ is the DQ. Then I can have an, uh, uh, an array list uh, in Java uh, util package, I have array list. And you may see here is the hierarchy of the classes that I have in Java. So let me increase this. So as you can see, I have interfaces type, list of E, whatever E, because we did not discuss about for the sake of whatever uh, the generics programming. I have list of E element, whatever element is the interface. And then I have the linear containers like vector, array list and linked list. This is actually a vector. This is a double linked list. And this array list is a double linked list with each element being an array 
with pointers, references to objects of whatever class E I have, right? This is equivalent actually with Bitwin's STL. Then I have set interface, which is on the same level with list, and I have a lot of classes, but I put most three important classes. Tree set, has set, and link has set. As you can see in here, I have another two types of containers. Tree, and we are going to discuss immediately what means tree, then hash. What means hash, we are going to see immediately. And then finally, we have a totally different interface of MED, which is called in C++ association container. I'm going to associate to an object from class K, which stands for key, another object from class V, whatever V. Could be uh, if you are referring to contact list in your smartphone. Your class key could be the full name, like name, first name and last name or surname. So this is an object from name class K. And then the value could be an ob object from class, for instance, um, phone number, right? Where you have the phone number and uh, a lot of derivatives from there. So you associate to some key and some value. And for the association, you have, again, two types of containers. Either is tree, either is hash. Now let's move forward, doesn't matter is hash table or hash map or so on and so forth, is a hash. So let's go through this ninja two minutes approach of data structure and let's have an array like this and I'm going to start to annotate and please let me know if you cannot see my annotation. Let's assume I have uh, this 10 in here and then seven and then 14 and then 20 and one and five and eight. and I have this linear structure, doesn't matter as it is a double linked list or is a DQ or whatever uh, class I'm using from Java is an array list or a an vector. And then I want to create a tree and I'm getting first node, which is a value 10 is becoming the root node. As you can see in here, then I'm getting seven and seven I'm asking myself is less than or is greater than, I can use vice versa, but I have to stick to my own rule. Either all the values are in the left side or all the, all the values which are less than 10 are in the right side. I'm going to work with the smaller value on the left side and seven is less than 10. I'm going to create node in the left side of 10, as you can see in here. Then I'm moving forward and then I have 14. And um, as you can see, 14, how is in comparison with the root 10 on the right side, which means binary tree means each node is not having more than two nodes as a children. And this is the parent node. Therefore, when I'm going to 20, 20, how is taking into account 10? Is greater than, no, is not less than, then I'm moving in this node. How is 20 with respect to 14 is again greater than. It's going to appear here 20. And let's construct, as you can see, I have 20 in here, and so on and so forth. This is for one, this is for five. Why? Five is less than 10, less than seven, and is greater than one. I'm going to go into the right side. Of course, here I have pointers to the right, pointer to the right, and then pointer to the left, which is null, because I have no node as a children node in the left side of one. And finally, it's done, because the last value is eight. Now, let's discuss a little bit, and I'm going to start the annotation. What means, for instance, I'm going to start the annotation, and please let me know if you don't see. Let's, and I'm going to save this as a PowerPoint page. So let's stick to this sample and saying, I want to find out the eight, and this is the value I want to search it. Okay, if this is the value I want to search it, what I'm going to do in a standard loop statement going through an array. I'm going to say, okay, I have to compare this eight with this 10. Is equal? Not, because I want to find out where is eight. Then I'm moving forward. And when I'm moving forward, I'm saying, okay, it's not equal. I'm going to the next one with seven, it's not equal. Dot, dot, dot. And finally, I'm going to select when, and I'm saying, I finally, I found eight when I'm getting in here. I hope everybody agrees. So when I'm getting in here, my eight is equals with this eight. Let's count a little bit how many iteration I did. Eight comparing with 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven iteration. 
And that's it. In the seventh iteration, I found out my value. Of course, on purpose, I took the last value from the, from the array. How is happening this search in a binary tree, search binary tree? Because this is binary tree, each node is not having more than two children nodes. This is binary. And then search, because I put the lower value into the left, the higher value into the right. And let's take the same eight. Eight comparing with 10, this is right. So I'm going to put a stamp. Eight comparing with 10 is first iteration, is not equal. Then eight is less than 10. Therefore, I'm, get, I'm going to get rid of all the nodes in the right side of the 10. Doesn't matter, I have 1,000 nodes, I simply vanish them. So as you can see in here, I'm going to select and I'm going to draw this. For these nodes, I don't care anymore. So these nodes vanished in terms of my searching. Of course, they are still staying into my data structures as, as references, as pointers, but I don't care. Then moving forward, I'm comparing eight with seven. And when I'm comparing eight with seven, how is eight with seven? Sorry, for this, I should say is not equal. I put a cross and here again, the stamp of cross because eight is not equal with seven. This is the second iteration, is the second comparison. But again, all because eight is greater than seven, I'm going to focus on the nodes in this side because all these nodes in here and I'm going to select them, I don't care less about them. So simply, if I have another 500 nodes in this area, of course, I do not have it. I have two. I care less about them, right? And finally, I'm getting to eight because I'm comparing eight with this one. And then I'm going to obtain, look, yes, finally, eight. How many iteration I did? One, two, three, right? Besides seven in here. So what is good for a binary, tree, binary search tree? for searching of course this is the name of course when i'm adding elements maybe it's more challenging to adding elements in a data structure like this but for searching elements i did three iterations instead of seven so this was long story short about the binary search tree let's move forward i'm going to save this jpg and uh, uh, show in finder uh, i'm going to share with you this jpg let me show you so this is the screenshot in here ah, come on so this is the screenshot and i'm going to double click on it is what we did right so it's not an issue uh, you have this you got the main point idea here i'm going to stop annotation so clear right now clear all drawings and let's move forward we have this uh, moving forward um, we have the following things, we have the hash. So independently of what language we are discussing, Java, Kotlin, Scala, C Sharp, Python, even not GS, but in there is a little bit different. We are going to meet these kind of data structures, linear one, tree and hash. Now in each kind of data structure, I can store key and value in Java, especially in the tree and the hash type value. Let's focus on the hash a little bit more. And on the hash, what means hash? I have a function hash, which is taking an input, whatever input, this can be a four gigabytes movie, and is producing an output of four bytes or of 20 bytes if we are referring to crypto functions like SHA-1, right? SHA-1, uh, Secure Hash Algorithm 1, is producing an output of 20 bytes, 160 bits from whatever I'm inserting in there. If we are referring to SHA-2, I'm going to produce 32 bits, 256 bits, uh, 32 bytes, sorry. So 32 bytes, which is equivalent to 256 bits. So this is another cryptographic hash function. And then I have SHA-3, which is producing whatever bits I want, mainly either 256, either 512 bits, which means 64 bytes. So I'm getting an input, whatever input, and then I'm producing a hash code. And this code, I associate an object to it. The next slide is going to explain better. So therefore, what is good this function for? If I'm putting two movies, and those movies are the same, and only one bit is different, then I expect the output to be totally different. And this is why it's called hash. I want to have different values, total different output values, for a slightly difference in the input. 
So this is first feature of a, of a hash function and a hash data structure. The second one is if I have two different keys and I'm going to hash them, most likely in some certain combination, I'm going to obtain the same hash. This is called collision. I want to minimize the number of collisions. So my function hash is very good as long as the number of collision is minimized. And as you can see in here, let's stick to the um, contact sample from your smartphone, right? You have a name, like John is the uh, first name, Smith is the last name or surname, right? And I'm processing a hash function and you may wonder what kind of processing function could be this and I'm going to show you a hash function and I'm obtaining 873. And then I'm getting the Sam Doe and this text from here being hash, I'm going to obtain an index 998. And of course, for each index I'm obtaining from the hash, again, is very good if I do not have collision. But, not, but unfortunately here, as you can see, John Smith, which is a different text than Sandra D, is having, after applying hash function, the same 873, which means I would have a simple linked list here. I have two values associated to the key, same key index. Let's stick to this sample in here in eight. If my eight is going to be a key and eventually a, a, a more complex object, not just an integer or a double, could be like a name, then what I'm going, how many iteration I'm going to spend to find eight? So as long as I'm applying hash to each value and I'm constructing my data structure, which is looking like this, for the keys, I have an index. And for each index, finally, I have the records where I have the key with values. So I, in, instead of having um, uh, association into the tree or array list, I have this association into this. This is the entire hash table, my hash structure. I would have the phone number associated to Lisa Smith, John Smith, Sandra D, and Sam Doe. And then after I spend some effort in creating this hash table, then the finding, this search is going to happen just like this. I'm getting some dough, I'm applying the hash function, it's taking two milliseconds or whatever milliseconds to apply and to obtain this index. And boom, in the first and only one iteration, I'm getting to this value, plus one phone number, five, five area code, 5030. So as you can see here, the search in hash table is much more faster, which is not faster is the creation of hash table, of course. But once I have created the search is boom, is immediately. So as long as you have seen in this, you may wonder what is a hash function because I'm not going to teach you right now what is a, a hash function. I'm just going to show you a simple sample, not a cryptographic one because it's far more complex. I'm going to show you a simple sample and therefore I'm commuting for the second and last package for today. But before, uh, yeah, and then we are starting Kahoot, all of us, 52 guys in here. So I'm going in JCF and here, let me show you a complex class like, uh, you know, the, again, the suffix that you have it in here is giving you the order in going through the samples. And for instance, I want sample number five, if I do not mistake. Uh, and for sample, sample uh, number five, I have person class. So I want to highlight in this object order five. And this object order five, I would have one. I have a class name which is implementing comparable and clonable. As, a, as you can see, I also have a hash code function. My hash code function is acting how, and we are going to see in the lab as well very fast after the, uh, this meeting, one hour and a half. I'm getting my first field, which in my case is first name of class string in here, and I'm multiplying with 31 at power of one. If I would have three fields, then the third field is going to be multiplied with 31 and again 31. And you may say, look, but this is a string, how you are going to get the hash code of it? So then I'm applying in cascade the hash code from class string. If I want to see how the hash code in class string it is, then I have to investigate the string of Java class and see how it is. And of course it's taking the length and it's taking the container and it's producing in eventually a hash value. Doesn't matter my value in some certain point in time is going to be larger than an int 
how much is how how, how much space is occupying an int in Java? Four bytes. But from this 32 bits, four bytes, even one I'm using for the sign in Java. So therefore, I have from zero to 30 because 31 is the sign. 30 bits, so in total 31 bits to stick with the number. Doesn't matter when I get a higher value, uh, respectively, I'm going like in modulo class, right? I'm going back into those 31 bits and doesn't matter what value I'm putting in there, I'm going to obtain always an int. That's why in some certain point in time, I might have collision like this, right? And for sure I have collision. The problem is this is a good function which is having collision uh, minimized. Now let's move forward. And before going into Kahoot, let me uh, express something else. Let's stick about it, uh, the C++ comparison, and let's try to understand the following thing. Let's assume these are objects from integer class in C++. Please understand, because I have decided that seven is less than 10, I had to implement the order relation, right? So in C++, question for you guys, what operator I should over, overload into a class. Let's assume I have my integer class in C++, which are where I'm storing only these numbers. What operator I have to overload in C++ in order to work these data structures, in order to have this relation? Please type it or say it, whatever is convenient for you. I'm going to watch the chat. Yes, Andy. Thank you very much. And Mateus Kurezvan and Lupsana Sabrina, thank you very much. Yes, is operator less than, and that's it. I don't need, an, yeah, it's very good, Philip. So I don't need, the, uh, here I have also the signature, right? So I have operator less than, this is in C++. Yes, it's good. I have to have the implementation of this operator. Otherwise, this data structure is not going to understand who is less than. Let's imagine if I'm going to operate instead of numbers with object from class student. What means for me is a student is less than other student? Then depends of my business logic. Could be because my student is having a smaller height than the other one. This is a physical element. Or is having uh, lower grades than the first one, right? So the average grades of all his, mark, his or her mark are less than the previous one or is having the scholarship less than. So me as a software developer, together with the specification, I'm establishing who is less than. That's why I have to overwrite less than. Now let's move to Java back and let's understand that I have to overload less than operator. But in Java, for a while, I do not have overloading of the operators like in C++. Maybe it's going to be in Java 15. But right now, from Java uh, 8 to Java 11, what we are working, and eventually Java 14, we do not have overloading of an operator. Also, is a JSR, Java specification request, in work in Java uh, community process, JCP, for this overloading. And we are going to have sooner than later. But right now, because we do not have it, the order relation is handled by this compare to function. Uh, compare to function. If I do not have this compare to method, from which interface? From comparable, therefore, I cannot have these objects used in data structures like tree, or more specifically in Java, in data structure like tree set or tree map. Now, in addition, if I want my objects from my class to be used in data structures like link hash set, hash set or hash table, I have to provide this a question to you, but it should be a simple one. What function do you think I have to override in order to have my objects able to be stored in data structure like this, like hashes? What method? I'm waiting for the chat. Should I repeat the question? Get hash code. So my question was again, what method I should override into my uh, name class in order to have my objects be able to be used into data structures like this. And already I have received an, uh, an answer, but I assume some uh, get hash code from Andy Greco. So yes, indeed, as you can see here is hash code. Get hash code, uh, hash code is with capital H in C sharp. Here is hash code. And this hash code does not have an interface. This is inherited from 
This is inherited from Java Lang object class, Java Lang package object class. So therefore, for the moment, take it by heart, I would have an annotation here for sure, like add override, right? So this is the annotation that I have in here for this hash code. If I do not have it, this is not a big deal, not a big issue. Why? Because it's going to be used the hash from the parent class. Which parent class in here I have? Doesn't matter I want it or I don't want it. I have by default extends, I'm typing in line number four, object class. With object class, again, doesn't matter I want it or that I don't want it, is derived, is inherited, I mean, is from Java Lang and automatically is imported in here, as you may see. So I have Java util import for my uh, everything I have, and here import Java Lang object. Doesn't matter, I want it or I not, semicolon. Each instruction is separated by semicolon. I have something like this. Now, let's move forward. This is, of course, I may have here the package, and this package, I want to have it like this, package, u.asa.jcf, semicolon. And now my class is more or less complete, right? So besides the get and set, I have the uh, constructor and then I have clone. When I'm providing the hash in pairing, I have to provide equals. And I hope it's clear for everybody that is totally different when I'm going into a uh, main class. If my object, I would have a statement like this and then I'm go going to comment this statement of OB1 or N1 from name one equals equals N2 this stands for comparing the references in terms of contents so where they are point pointing into the heap memory. And if they are pointing into the same area of heap, they are equals equals. If I want to stick with the content, of course, then I have to override equals method. And therefore I would have something like if n1 dot equals equals n2. And this is, um, getting as a result a boolean value like a true or false and this is comparison in terms of content that's why i have to override for using in hash table because always in hash table i may have the hash calculation of the index and i might have the equals equals in terms of content john smith and sandra d of course they are different but, but uh, I have to stick to this, they are different. Otherwise, I can assume they are equals if I do not implement correctly the equals method. That's why I have to have equals. Now, coming back to our sample, I'm going to say like this. I'm going into uh, this folder, source. I'm going to delete from EU, ASA, JCF, all the class files. So let me show you here. So I'm in here ls u a s a dot j c f and before going in there please be prepared to start kahoot so rm remove from eu folder from asa from j c f all the star all the class files with extension class and now when i'm going to list them as you may see i have kept only the Java source code file. Before going forward and to discuss ProgMain JCF0, um, Java list one, and then um, uh, frequency for an object order five, let's uh, go and let's go to very fast to Kahoot, all of you. I'm going to wait all of you. And in Kahoot, I'm going to play for you. And this is for doing also the presence, right? Kahoot. My Kahoots. Yes. And, uh, okay. And then I have, okay. Give me a few moments. Meanwhile, you please prepare to have your Kahoot started from your phone, from your laptop, doesn't matter as long as you have it and unfortunately again starting from next week we have to fool around also in online.asa.ro we are going to stick with some activities in there no more than two or three minutes but we want to uh, have track 
that we have been there, also that we are using more, much, much more powerful tools like Zoom, uh, like uh, yeah, what we have video conference and teleworking uh, place like this GitHub and this Kahoot in combination is much more powerful than and Sakai is much more po powerful than online.asa.ro which sticks to Moodle PHP platform 20 years ago, right? So, but that's it, we have to do it. Now, let's focus on this lecture number four. We have two questions in here. And let's get started with play and host live. And I'm waiting all 53 of you, or actually 52, because I'm not going to play, would not be fair, all right? So I'm waiting all of you to join. I'm going to stop this bloody mute. Okay, so please guys, log in. The pin game is 97673734. Thank you very much. Good. I'm waiting a few minutes for you. Yes, I have a chat message. What nickname do you put? Full name as much as possible. First of all, the surname, last name. So family name, please put it in full. Three letters of the uh, first name from Andrew A, 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 A and D is uh, enough or uh, including the R. And very important, the number of the group, 1064, 1065, whatever group you want, 62 and so on. Right. So this is the nickname. For instance, you, uh, Vlad, uh, very specific, you may have Gond uh, space Vlad or VLA is enough and then 1063, one, 1063. One, oh, okay, so I'm waiting you for you guys. I have only 32 right now, so go in Kahoot and enter this pin, please. Yeah, look, these are all okay. Florescu, Al, a Al is from Alexander, I suppose. The idea is to identify you in terms of uh, presence. And we are going to do it presence, again, mandatory. Please transmit to your colleagues. I have doubts the English series is only uh, 54 students for both labs and now lecture because we have to flag, we have to track the fact we are doing our activities and presence is one of the tracking info. So please, Uh, tell to your colleagues the presence is mandatory. Deci vă rog de data viitoare, prezența e obligatorie atât la curs cât și la seminar. E pus și pe site. Toți vom fi prezenți atât în curs cât și în seminar. Mulțumesc pentru înțelegere. 49, aștept până la 52. I'm going to add, wait until 52, guys. Ah, 5049. Should I start? Is anybody who did not connect 51. I'm waiting for the last one, please, guys. Ah, oh, come on. Is somebody who was not able to connect somehow? Okay, then I assume the other student maybe is from the third year doesn't want to play. That's it. I'm going to start right now. So we have two questions from previous lectures. And right now, first question. If I would have a EU ASA package, the correct command line for compiling test.java is going to be what? Java C, test.java is with red. Java C, EU ASA package slash test.java with blue. Java C, the same, but with small t instead of capital T of test.java. And Java C, EU slash ASA slash test.java. You have 10 seconds. 25 answers, 29 answers, and counting. Good, so this was the answer. 21 responded correctly, and these are not. So please guys, focus is a little bit, is in, in the morning, I'm pretty aware about this, but let's move forward. And then, okay, good, let's move forward. Second question, Java clone method is into. And now we have Java Lang object class with red, Java Lang clonable interface with blue, Java Lang auto closable interface with orange or nowhere 
in other this like 70 seconds 16 24 answers and counting Yeah, because it didn't let you to answer because time was up, I think. Or maybe it's a bug, who knows. And as you can see here, we have 16 answers correct. Right now, taking into account the speed of your answers, I'm going to skip this. Uh, okay, Greco Andy. Place number three. Place number two, Bolomiran. And place number one. <laughs> okay, so Dutsescu, Philip. Thanks, guys. Move forward. So moving forward, I'm going to uh, get feedback and download, and this is your uh, presence in this lecture. So we are moving forward to this, and let's stick to the sample. We have a few minutes left. And I'm going to here and download. I have the results. I'm going to uh, manage them. So let's move forward. And coming back to our structure in here, and moving into the virtual machine Linux, let's discuss studies, the password. Start from st student, stud, stud, username and password. Let's clear the screen a little bit. And then I'm moving forward and let's open several things I want to discuss with you. I have this, this sample is going to be in the lab as well and has been done. And of course it's published more or less in GitHub and on acs.asa.ro slash java. So this is the first sample. This is the second sample I want to discuss. You are going to investigate all the samples, but I'm sticking to most important samples. Then for loop benchmark test, and finally this object order. So these, I want to stick with you in uh, 10 minutes, no more. And then you are going to investigate all of them. So open with G, GNU editor, gedit. And as you can see in here, besides generics one and four, I can close one at least. I'm going first in the for loop benchmark, and then I'm going to discuss about this, which are going to do it into um, the lab in English, of course. Uh, lab in English actually was on Monday. So let's stick to this. I have first of all an object list. What is the type declarative type for this? is an interface, list of T or E, whatever E, in my case is Java Lang Integer. As you can see in here, what is the advantage to work with the interfaces type, like I have it in here, all the classes are going to implement methods from the list. Please imagine, it's totally different to insert an element in a array list, in a linked list, and in a vector. The effective operation of inserting an element into a list is totally different, but I have only one single method for all of them, add. And as long as this method, uh, these classes are saying, look, I'm powerful, I'm going to implement this list interface, they must implement add method, must. And therefore, as you can see in here, my object is having declarative type of interface, cannot have the real type after new, an interface, I must have an, a, 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 a real class. In my case, it's a array list, so I can have whatever class from here because all these three classes are going to implement Java util package list interface. And therefore, as you can see in here, as a static area of code, which is run only once, in my list, I'm adding a Y. After five minutes, if I do not like this new array list, and I'm saying I don't like it, this, my manager is saying like this, my team lead is saying like this, and I want to use new, sorry, new allocation of memory, and then vector, and then diamond operator, and then like this, in this second, from now on, I modify nothing in the source code, but my data structure is not a array list anymore, it's a simple vector. But add methods remains the same because both vector and array list are saying, look, we are implementing that interface. So why is good, and we discussed seven days ago, why is good to work with interfaces type? It's very good to work with interfaces type because I have standardization. So all the classes that are saying, look, I'm going to implement this list here, interface, then, are must provide, uh, must provide this add method. Now, let's come back in here and let's stick to see what I have. For each four, this is for each, right? Integer two points, 
in other languages, I would have like Kotlin in keyword. Here I have two points. For each I object from integer into the list, I'm going to, my list is having 10 million uh, one element. For the element 10 million, which is the last one, I want to print only that value. But I'm going in for each and I especially have an incrementation. And I want for each four to see how many milliseconds is going to take, right? And I do start time and time and then the difference between them. Therefore, I'm moving forward. Let's see, this was the, uh, the loop statement with for each. Let's take another loop statement, the one type two, which is with iterator. This with iterator is recommended because it's the same for all the data structures. So I'm going to modify nothing if I'm going into a different data structure. I have a iterator, I have has next, and here for the third expression incrementation, my incrementation is going to be this one. Iterator object it dot and non-static method next. And then I'm going through all my uh, values. Moving forward, I have type three. Type three, as you can see, I have a 4j equals zero, j less than list dot size. And then I have type four, where it's more or less the same, but list dot size call of the method size is actually stored in this variable, uh, not object, this fundamental type in size uh, variable. And then I'm comparing every time with this size, not with calling function. This is type four. And let's see how many milliseconds I'm going to get. And finally, is the same. This in here, doesn't matter, I did not store into another variable list.size calling of this method, because I know for sure in four statements, this first expression till the semicolon is executed once and only once. And then I'm simply comparing j with le uh, greater than equal zero, j minus minus, and I'm growing, going through all the elements. This I don't want to discuss right now. We are going to discuss when we discuss functional programming because we are in multi-paradig programming. We are still sticking with paradigm of object-oriented, but when we are going into functional, you are going to understand this in a bit. Right now is not the case. Let's compile this and let's run and let's see how many milliseconds and why. So I'm going to compile this, for instance, all the classes, you know, C, in Java Collection Framework. I'm going to obtain a lot of classes in here. Right now I have only source code, as you can see. So right now, let's compile. And then I want to run this for loop statements benchmark. And for this benchmark, I'm going to say like this. Okay, control C. And here, of course, I'm going to paste and let's have a small discussion. Look, this for each loop took 170 milliseconds. This with iterator J took 78 milliseconds. I'm going to commute again to the source code. This was with the iterator. Now moving forward, what can I see? This is the, uh, how to say, the run with J like this. When I'm running again, because some optimization of JVM, I may obtain a little bit different values. Let's run. Okay, and the price goes to the smallest one, right? Which was the smallest one? Even here was this four iterator loop, right, 129 milliseconds. And here was the same iterator loop, 78 milliseconds. So as you can see in here, this with iterator was very good actually, right? And immediately after iterator, for instance, let's stick for this M. So this with iterator was very good, right? Iterator loop, if you are looking into milliseconds in here, this was the smallest one with the iterator loop 129. But let's stick to type four and type three, I think, here, yes. Type three and type four. Why do you think, is a question for you guys, type it or say it loudly on the microphone, I don't care. Um, why do you think 
Type 4 is better than type 3. Take a look in both uh, scenarios. Type 4 is this 4 right in here. And then I have something like this, 200, 209, which is much better than 330. So as you can see, let me show you collection size. Actually, the, this, this, let me show you. Yes, uh, using J like this and using J like this is a little bit better to go with minus minus, but I want, but I want to show you where is and why is, and you can run by yourself because we are running out of time again. Why do you think type three is better than type four? Why do you think this? Type three is like using collection and type four, if I calculate it correct, is like this size with J++, type three and type four. So using collection, 150, 50, and then I have this. So why, why, why do you think is different? Why is better or not? Guys, I addressed you a question then you are going to answer yourself but stick to the to this in this for loop i'm going to call size method each time i'm going through my iteration because i have to compare j with list dot size so here is called the method of course java is doing optimizations of course maybe in behind is not all the calls but normally for each iteration i have to go into this method and to call it but in here I stick only once to this list.size call of the function of the method size, and then I'm simply comparing with only this value. That's why normally this type four should be better than type three. So this being said, let's move forward and let's move forward to this probe main, and that's it. In uh, three minutes, I'm going to finish. What I have in here, as you can see, I have a list of planes, Avion in Romanian, and this is my object. We are going to do this in the lab. And either I'm using vector, either linked list, right? And in here, I'm going to add my planes. And finally, with the iterator, I'm going to print because my class avion plane is going to have this print method. And it's printing itself just sticking to the number of the passengers, right? Now, let's move forward. And once I did this and is going to run, more or less, this is a more simple uh, program than what we are going to do in the lab. Let's stick to the association data structure. So we see till now like this, a uh, 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 linear data structure. I can see a set, a uh, nonlinear data structure, a tree or a hash. Now let's move forward and let's see an association data structure with key and values. For me, maybe it's a little bit trivial, I would have a person which may have one or more planes, right? And I'm going to store them either in a hash, either in a tree map. I'm allowed to do this because both hash map or hash table and tree map are implementing this map interface. Look how I'm putting the data into it. So instead of adding new objects, I'm putting new objects, put. And I'm put what? Person and with the airplane. So I'm associating to each person an airplane. And then if I want to display them on the screen, and I'm going to do this, first of all, what I'm going to open from my tree, Ar Arbore in Romanian language, from my ARB, I'm going to obtain the entire set of key, and I'm going to obtain them into a set, as you can see in PowerPoint. So from my tree map, I'm going to obtain the entire set of the key with the help of an interface set and with the help of a data structure in, in behind, which implement interface set. And as you can see, I'm obtaining iterator for going through each element from my set. And as long as I'm doing this ITP object, I stay in here. I don't want initializa initialization because this was the expression for initialization. I want the Boolean expression for each iteration to be ITP iterator has next. Yes, I have more elements into my set. And going one by one, I had to, this is the, I plus plus, I minus minus, uh, in my case is plus plus. Next, I'm going to the next element into my set, which is the set of key. And for each key, I'm getting from my tree the value, which means 
like this searching of values in here. But each node of mine in here is going to be split in a half as util information. First half is the key, is a pointer to object person. And second half is again a pointer, a reference to object from value class, which in my case is plain, right? And then I'm going element by element once I have the set of the key and extracting the associated value from the tree or even from the hash table if I'm operating with the hash table because my program is going to work as it is if in here I'm going instead of having a tree map I'm going to have a hash table this is going to work of course so I'm typing hash table I'm going to run only this one and once I, I, I have run this uh, let me show you so again import package java util I'm going to run this and then I'm finalizing my, uh, my uh, lecture. So let me run it. And you are going to run everything you have, Progman JC of zero, Java Collection Framework zero. And in here, clear, let's run. And as you can see, it's running. And we are going to do this from 10.30. And the, uh, the group with Bogdan from now from 9 a.m. is going to do more or less a sample with Java Collection Framework. So you have it, guys, as you can see here. This was a, an array list. This is a tree map. And uh, yes, we are going to discuss, discuss more in detail in the lab, including with the debugger. So questions. Are any questions till now? Please type it or say it. If not, I'm going to...